Logarithmic simulation precludes negative values. This training module will explain why we need logarithms to simulate hydrologic data. A logarithm is the inverse of an exponent of a number. Hydrologic data are bounded by zero, are skewed, and vary by orders of magnitude. Logarithms are useful for analyzing hydrologic data because these characteristics are well described by exponents. This is training module R 1.04b for the Stochastic Empirical Loading and Dilution Model Seldom. It has 13 slides and will take about 11 minutes. This presentation was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This module has three learning objectives. We will learn that you need to understand logarithms to analyze hydrologic data because using logarithm statistics precludes generation of negative values in Monte Carlo models. Regression of arithmetic values can lead to non-constant variance and negative values. Regression of logarithmic values improves fit statistics and precludes negative output values. This graph shows the left side of a hypothetical normal distribution on an arithmetic scale. The vertical scale is the probability density and the horizontal scale shows the hypothetical data values. The problem with a normal distribution in arithmetic space is the possibility of negative values. The tails of the normal distribution are infinite, although infinitely small beyond a few standard deviations. Hydrologic data can be highly variable. This can result in a substantial probability for producing negative values for large sample sizes if a normal distribution is used. If we apply the frequency factor method, any value of a normal distribution can be calculated by taking the average value and adding or subtracting the standard deviation times the normal frequency factor. The normal frequency factor relates the probability of occurrence of any given value to the number of standard deviations that value is away from the average. To find the probability of a zero value, we set the frequency factor equation equal to zero as shown in the upper left. We then solve for the normal frequency factor that would result in a value of zero. We find that this value is equal to minus one times the average divided by the standard deviation. This is equal to minus one divided by the coefficient of variation COV. This graph shows that the risk for obtaining arithmetic values that are less than or equal to zero can be substantial if the normal distribution is used to simulate data. As the relative variation of data increases, the coefficient of variation increases, the normal frequency factor approaches zero, and the risk for obtaining a negative value approaches 50%. If the COV is equal to one, then the K zero would be equal to negative one, and we would expect about 16% of the data would be less than zero. As the COV shrinks to about 0.27, the KO value decreases to minus 3.72, and the probability that a negative value would be generated it shrinks to about 0.01% or about 1 in 10,000. That does not mean, however, that a negative value may not appear by chance in a smaller stochastic population. To illustrate this risk, we can use the equation to calculate the zero point with statistics from actual runoff data. For example, the median coefficient of variation among commonly measured urban runoff constituents in Table 6-12 of the National Urban Runoff Program Report is 0.75. The associated zero point on an arithmetic scale would be a normal frequency factor of minus 1.33. If a normal distribution with a coefficient of variation of 0.75 is used to model data, about 9.2% of values would be less than or equal to zero. This graph shows that the risk for obtaining arithmetic values that are less than or equal to zero can be substantial if the normal distribution is used for modeling pre-storm stream flow or highway runoff concentrations. The vertical axis shows the percentage of generated values that would be less than zero by using the normal distribution. The horizontal axis is a categorical axis showing the stream gauges in seldom and the event mean concentrations in the highway runoff database. There are statistics for 2,783 stream gauges in the seldom model, which are used to generate the pre-storm stream flows. The coefficients of variation range from 0.16 to 40 with a median of 1.78 and an average of 2.4. Based on these values, more than 99% of the stream gauge statistics will result in one or more negative values. About 50% of the stream gauges have COVs that will result in negative values that comprise 28% of the population generated by using a normal distribution. About 25% of the stream gauges have COV values that will result in negative flows in more than 35% of a normally distributed population. The situation is not as bad for the 3,418 sets of event mean concentration populations in the highway runoff database. 
about 75% of the COVs for these EMC populations would result in one or more negative values. The median coefficient of variation among these EMCs is 0.64, which would result in about 6% of values that would be less than zero if they were modeled using a normal distribution. The maximum COV would result in a normally distributed population with about 41% of values that are less than zero. As we know, it's impossible to have stream flows or concentrations that are less than zero. So it's important to use the right distributions to simulate hydrologic data. This graph shows the left side of a hypothetical normal distribution on a logarithmic scale. If the logarithms of data can be modeled using a normal distribution, the data are described as being log normal. As we discussed, the tails of the normal distribution are infinite, although infinitely small beyond a few standard deviations. Similarly, distributions that can be used to model data also can be used to model the logarithms of data. In seldom, the average standard deviation and skew of the logarithms of data can be used to simulate hydrologic variables. Using the logarithms of data to model conditions in the environment has two main advantages. It enforces a lower bound of zero, and values can be infinitely small, which means they are effectively zero, but they cannot be less than or equal to zero. Using the logarithms of data to model water quality meets the everything is everywhere axiom. Water quality constituents may not be detectable with commonly used laboratory methods, but that does not mean the constituents are absent. The axiom also means that a detection does not always identify a source. Natural and man-made constituents are constantly being mixed and distributed by the atmosphere, fresh water, the oceans, and biota. For example, in the summer of 2001, a large dust storm in the Sahara Desert in Africa put enough iron-laden dust in the atmosphere to cause toxic algal blooms in the ocean off the west coast of Florida. Similarly, chlorofluorocarbon refrigerants, pesticides, and herbicides have been detected in the environment in Antarctica. In the fall of 2011, radioactive iodine from the Fukushima nuclear plant traveled around the world and was detected in North America, Iceland, and Europe. Scientists still use radioactive isotopes from atomic testing in the 1950s and 1960s to estimate the age of groundwaters. So we can say that the long lower tail of a log normal distribution may be a good approximation for water quality processes. Stream flow can be zero in an intermittent or ephemeral stream, but flows that do occur are well characterized by logarithmic probability distributions. Conditional probability methods can be used to model stream flow data with some proportion of zero flows. This graph shows the linear relation between event mean concentrations of suspended sediment and total copper in milligrams per liter that were measured during 161 storms at highway runoff monitoring sites in Massachusetts. In this example, we can see the non-constant variance in the scatter above and below the line. It's impossible to see at this scale, but the scatter around the regression line begins to explode at about 30 milligrams per liter of suspended sediment. About 72% of the suspended sediment concentrations are above 30 milligrams milligrams per liter. This regression line does not produce negative copper concentrations for measurable suspended sediment concentrations, but I have seen runoff quality reports that do include such regression equations. Statistics for the scatter above and below the line are used for Monte Carlo modeling of regression relations. Although the line does not cross zero, the 99th percent confidence interval for this line crosses zero at a suspended sediment concentration of about 800 milligrams per liter. About 96 percent of the measured sediment concentrations were less than or equal to 800 milligrams per liter. This means that we have a very high probability for generating negative copper concentrations in Monte Carlo modeling scenarios using the arithmetic regression line statistics. Furthermore, use of the arithmetic regression line statistics would not be technically defensible because the variance of this scatter does change with increasing suspended sediment concentrations. This violates the assumption for the commonly used ordinary least squares linear regression technique and precludes meaningful use of the scatter for Monte Carlo analyses. This graph shows the linear relation between the logarithms of the data from the last slide. The measured values are shown on a logarithmic scale. In the example, we can see that variance in the scatter above and below the line is relatively constant. The logarithmic scales show that these data do vary by orders of magnitude and that the relation in logarithmic space is linear. This equation transforms to a power function because a logarithm is the inverse of the exponent of a number. The equation of the line for the logarithms of data has a negative intercept. This means that the intercept is less than 1, not less than 0, because it is a negative exponent of 10. 
The slope of the line of the logarithms of data is 0.81. Therefore, the transformed equation is equal to the suspended sediment concentration to the power of 0 0.81. Although we cannot take the logarithm of 0, we can plug 0 into the transformed power equation, and the result will always be 0. If we add and subtract the 99th percentile prediction interval in logarithmic space, this is the same as multiplying or dividing the transform power equation by the prediction interval. Thus, a regression line developed using the logarithms of data cannot produce a negative concentration value, and using the logarithms of data commonly improves the relation in theory and practice. In this module, we learn that you need to understand logarithms to analyze hydrologic data because using logarithm statistics precludes generation of negative values in Monte Carlo models, regression of arithmetic values can lead to non-constant variance and negative values, and regression of logarithmic values improves fit statistics and precludes negative output values.